The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. Welcome to the Quirky Dog Podcast, inspired by some of the quirkiest dogs you can ever imagine and the owners who love them. This podcast is brought to you by the quirky couple themselves, Scott and Jess Williams. Their aim is to educate and entertain. Here's Scott and Jess. Welcome, guys, and happy Wednesday. Today we have some very, very special guests, but first we're going to start with the quirky tip of the day. All right, our quirky tip of the day is brought to you by Viagen. Viagen Pets is a cloning company out of Texas. And today I am going to talk about how do you know if the cloning actually worked? Like, where is the proof in the pudding? Obviously, cloning is an expensive process. What you actually get is a DNA comparison of the sample that you sent in and the clone puppy or kitten after the cloning process. So you know that everything is official and the DNA is exactly as it should be. And Viagen brought us the quirky tip, but the quirky tip of the day is to check out this awesome painting dog on Instagram. I first heard about this duo when I was visiting the Ashley Whippet Museum in Naperville, and they've just been popping up everywhere, and we just had to have them on the podcast. Leonard is a painting dog, and I want you to check out his Instagram, Live Love Leonard Lee. And he's joined here today with his mom, Teresa Hanula, and we're very excited to have you both. So thank you guys so much for joining us, and welcome to the show. Hi, bud. Hey. <laughs> we're so excited to be here and to talk about Leonard's adventures and his love of painting and all the cool places that's brought us and people that we get to meet. Yeah. So how so did it's this, been a lot of fun? How did this? How did this start? Like, what did the painting thing? And I have to say, Leonard painted my freaking hat. You guys, this is the cutest thing in the world. I said I wanted to order mm -hmm. one, and Teresa was kind enough to send me a hat. But it's so fashionable, and I'm going to be wearing it everywhere. I had to preserve it for the podcast. <laughs> but how did this journey start? Like, where did you? Did, was this the plan? You wanted to get a border collie puppy, and you wanted it to paint. Like, what happened here? <laughs> No, you kind of went astray there, I think. Um, no, it was he's a border collie, so he stays busy, and he's a trick dog, does all different kinds of tricks, and he stays really busy. But he really took to painting, and we brought a gift to, like, a dog family that we knew because we were going there for dinner, and we were driving across country, and we actually stopped at the Ashley Whippet Museum in Naperville. It was our first stop. Got to know Tom there. He now has two painting discs hanging there onward and our journey because now he's the youngest dog to have visited all 50 u.s states so that was the beginning of it all and that first painting was in the car and we brought that to a family that we were having dinner with in vegas because we thought they're dog people what would you bring flowers <laughs> and they were like wow this is so cool you should really pursue this and i was thinking like are you guys nuts <laughs> and here i am and look and it has his own art room, so maybe the crazy starter stop in Vegas. <laughs> and he just started painting different things, different surfaces, using acrylics. Now he paints with markers. And then COVID happened, so we had a little bit of time on our hands. And there was one gallery that I approached, and they said we would love to have two pieces of his art on display. And we were lucky enough that that gallery was in London, at Southworth Park Gallery. So that was the first time his art actually went on display and approaching other galleries later. That's a great little um, tidbit to give them. So now he's had paintings all over the country. He does paintings for charity. There's a tripod auction coming up soon in a few months that will benefit three-legged dogs. And there's a lot of really cool canine artists involved. This year's theme is collaborations. And behind us is part of our animal art collection. And there's an, I, hi, baby. <laughs> yes, I'll tell them this, the rest of the room is your artwork. But behind us are different collaborations he's worked on with a painting monkey, painting sloth. We have dolphin art up there, his hats. Um, and all these animals are from all over the world, which is the coolest thing because now we have kind of dog friends, dog family places, and we may not have even met some of them in person. So there's a really cool interspecies art collaboration that's going to be um, at Auburn University this summer coming up. So stay tuned for that. There's painting birds in there. And I don't know, we've just had so much fun with it. And working on the 
the hats and he started painting night lights and just, I don't know, it's something fun to do together. And I think anything that you can do with your dog just helps strengthen that relationship. And he's strengthened my education because I knew nothing about art. And there I was trying to like learn the color wheel and how to frame things. And he's a regular at Michael's and we've had another artist, um, Daniel Newman in LA helping us with some things and they're doing collaborations. And at first if art would drip, I'd be like, he's like, it's okay. You know, there has to be no rules here. And it's, it's just really been a cool journey to kind of learn all this together with us. And now we have an entire art room, about five easels. It's a little out of control. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. And for the people who are listening, um, I'm going to put all the links in the description, but I want you to check out his website too, uh, LeonardThePaintingDog.com to actually see his artwork because it's amazing. I mean, you think, oh, like a dog, what does it look like? Dog slobber, but it's some pretty good abstract art. <laughs> So explain to people how yeah. this process happens, because people are thinking a dog that paints, what does that mean? So kind of talk everybody through what that might look like. So a lot, a lot of people ask, like, if he just paints with his feet or what, you know, because he doesn't have opposable thumbs, which makes things harder. But um, I have one of his paintbrushes here, if you can see. And it's really kind of interesting that my last dog painted a little bit, but he kind of painted just sort of the same style. And Leonard's taking things to a whole new level. And my dad made these brushes for that dog decades ago. And I don't know, it kind of just has a special place in our heart. And a few years ago, my dad sustained a brain injury. And I mean, that was just devastating for everybody. But the very first phone call that he made when he figured out how to use his cell phone again was to tell somebody that Leonard's artwork was on display in London. And do you know who made the paintbrushes? <laughs> that was what he was bragging about. So... He was young. He was about a year and a half when we started this, and he just turned six now. So the beginning of it was just teaching him a hold, leave it, take it, leave it, take it, hold, putting some paint on there, and then kind of letting him go crazy for it. And when he paints, he really enjoys it. So sometimes I'll have him pick the colors. Sometimes I'll pick the colors. We branched out into also doing spill art, which you may have seen, like YouTube videos and such going around. And I have him stand on the coffee table and I put paints, the a medium in there and he knocks over little cups and they land on the canvas and then he has to hold the canvas until it drips down. So those come out to be really cool kind of swirly pieces of art and that's been pretty neat. And he recently started painting with markers, calligraphy pens, loves that, loves painting a plastic of all things. It was kind of a joke when some backgrounds came in for us. And I said, I, th I think Leonard really wants to paint on this plastic. Kind of was a joke. And that artist Daniel said, let him paint on the plastic. And he, and he does. It's like liberating for him because the paint and the pens move so fast that he just loves it. Uh, his most recent painting adventure is he started painting on horseback as well. So he loves horses. And some of his artwork, if you look at it, I feel like he paints horses a lot too. Like if you kind of really look at the shapes, so every year he's in an exhibit. For the last few years, he has been at Sacramento Fine Arts Center, and it's called Animal House. And that's going to be coming up this summer, too. So we're going to be working on some piece that I hope will turn out looking like an animal. But Leonard kind of always dictates that. And I try not to hold him back since he's the one who started this whole journey. Yeah, And it's just been so much fun really getting to know it. Yeah. That's amazing. All right. Explain this painting on horseback a little more. What that I thought he was like. painting the horses. <laughs> <laughs> Tipping the paint over on so horses. So I started riding horses. <laughs> Painting the horses. Um, I started riding as an adult, and then one day they couldn't fit me in for a lesson. And I guess a lot of my conversations start off like this. I said, I hope you don't think I'm crazy, but <laughs> can I sign Leonard up for a, less for a pony lesson? Because my horse trainer's daughter would do lessons for teenagers. And she said, well, you know, we know you're a dog trainer and really nothing surprises us now. <laughs> so we started him just sitting on a horse, balancing, standing there. Now he rides a pony. He'll even do little jumps on the pony. He seems to really enjoy that. And then every time I just try to push him a little bit more to learn something new. So I brought canvas, a few paints, and we can get some pictures over to you of the very first painting that he did of on horseback, and I think it looks like a stick figure horse. 
is really neat. So he just sits up there, does a lap around the ring, does a little bit more, and <laughs> it's good for his I'd body. Say definitely a quirky dog. Yeah, it's good for his proprioception and his his physical fitness, and it's good for his creativity outlet. I love it. I think it's amazing. Yes. Do you ever uh, use? Yes. Do you ever use a target stick uh, to guide his uh, where you yes. want him to paint? Not. Not for painting. We've used a target stick and teaching all different other tricks. Right. Um, and I've debated about, like, you know, how to paint up, over. Do we, I don't know, do I kind of take his creativity and try to mold it into something that I want? I've kind of toyed back and forth with that because there have been a few times where he paints a little and he's done. And at one point I thought, oh, wow, like, there's really nothing on here. And I almost just threw it away. I flipped the painting upside down. I swear it looks like a Trojan horse. <laughs> and that one went to a gallery. So it was really neat. Like, I'm the one who messes him up. Right. So I try to kind of give him free reign to just do what he wants with that. But we might branch out into that well, it is you know, a, later it, now that he... You are, you are taking away the creativity to a certain extent when you have him following a, a target stick. I, uh, our other friend Omar has had his dogs do a lot of paintings. But he yeah. always has yeah. the dog follow a target stick. So he knows what he's going to have his dog paint before anybody else does. So he even takes the canvas and will turn it, you know, so that yeah. you don't really know what it's funny. You don't know what it looks abstract, but when it's done, it's a landscape or something like that, you know. But the, yeah. The, yeah, hand, yeah, yeah. the handler is guiding. He knows what he's doing. He's using the dog more as a medium rather than let the dog be the artist. You know what I mean? Yes, and I'm not an artist, and I'm trying to learn desperately, but it's not easy. I mean, I have a whole new appreciation for all artists out there, and there's actually another show that's going to be coming up um, in New York where Leonard's going to be painting in Tribeca. It just kind of sounds so cool to say yeah. that my dog paints in Tribeca, yeah, <laughs> but it'll be helping I don't think to Leonard, raise money for I don't our, think Leonard would be in the gallery if you were dictating how he painted yeah, right probably not yeah I mean, <laughs> it, it always not. works out that way yeah so yeah if he, yeah he's the one who's good at it if you're gonna have a session does he like go stand at the art room door do you like have designated time for painting like what does this look like in your lives at this point um so we had just moved and i had one kind of tiny bedroom in the house and a lot of his artwork like, I love and have emotional attachment to, but it was in bids, because how much artwork can I hang? And then I have this little room, <laughs> and as you can see, part of it behind me. Um, so he's got an easel set up in here and paints, and all the walls are covered with all of his different artworks. And we'll come in here, and sometimes I'll initiate it. Times so he'll just get up on the futon and lay down, and he don't want to. Then there was another time at, like, 1030 at night. He ran in here, ran over the easel, looked at it, looked at the paints. So I don't know if he had a creative moment and that the day was inspiring for him somehow. And he was just such in a mood to paint. It was really kind of wild. So, you know, I do the best that I can to try to understand, you know, what he's trying to tell me. And when he's done painting, he's done. And hopefully I'm getting most of that communication correct, but I guess I'll never really know. And it's funny when anybody comes over here, he runs right up to be like, this is my room and kind of looks around. <laughs> I like to think he's pretty proud of what he's done here. And, and it is a really great feeling when we help to raise money for different charities. Like the one, the art show in New York will be helping to raise money for the dogs and cats of Ukraine that have gone through a lot. And like I said, the tripods auction, that's for three-legged dogs. And it's just a neat feeling to show other people what dogs are capable of. I mean, I'm not sure that we ever even take them to their full potential. So it's, like I said, it's just a great way to spend time with your dog and to have these kind of memories. And we put things on hoodies and coffee mugs and hats. And it's something that I'll kind of always have of him. Because as we all know, unfortunately, they don't live long enough. And it's a way of leaving kind of his legacy behind. Yeah, for sure. No, uh, I think you, it's awesome. So he's been doing this now for how many years? Six. Six years? Five. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, almost five. Yep, he started about a year and a half, and some of those first pieces where I picked the color, no has, good. <laughs> has he gone through? A, and, has he gone through a dark period in his artwork? <laughs> <You know? laughs> um, I think maybe mom. Yeah. <laughs> Mom's learning curve is going through that, and now I 
had a giant wall in my living room and I couldn't find a piece of art that I really wanted to put there. And then I thought, wait a minute, you know, like, get with it. You have a painting dog. So he did his first giant piece there and it's hanging in the living room. And nobody would ever know unless you look and see the paw print in the bottom corner. So it's huge. And once we started working with another human artist, like he got us hooked on doing large things because a lot of times we just did, you know, 10 by 12, 11 by 14, white background. Now, like I said, the art's really evolved to using different colored backgrounds, different textures, plastic, medium, acrylics, higher quality acrylics, markers. It's kind of sky's the limit. And I'm thinking, wow, for so long, Leonard had to put up with me as being his guide. I'm glad that we've kind of met other artists, both canine and human, to really help us branch out and help Leonard be the best artist that he can be. Do, does Leonard have a smock? Or does he, or does he get a lot of baths? Yes, he does. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, he has. He has his smock. He also has a beret for the final photos. There you go. <laughs> Another colored smock. <laughs> we've, got, we've got a lot of things going on in here. So he's a very prepared artist, as his mom likes to shop. <laughs> so, um, yep, and he... Somehow never really gets it all over the floor. I end up with paint on my hands, on my phone while I'm filming. It's all over me, but never over him. So that's kind of the funny part. He's like, that's on you, mom. I don't know. I don't know how you get that done. <laughs> and we've got like transportable easels, um, little mini canvases that he's painted. It really is just like, I don't know. There's just so much out there in the art world. And he's been my introduction to it. And now I really like my interest for art is really growing. Yeah, I think that's awesome. And you guys have like so many other facets going on too. I know that you mentioned you do tricks, you do some disc, you have like this basketball thing going on. You have some record with that. <laughs> like, let's touch on the other side yeah. of Leonard too, outside of his painting, because he is a multifaceted canine. What's he the, is. What's He's the a busy Guinness World boy record? And um, most slam dunks by a dog in a minute. So now he has broken his three Guinness World records in that. So the first one, it started at 12, and he went to Detroit and broke it at a school where we were so honored to have a former Globetrotter be one of our witnesses. He broke it to 14. And then we, our second record was on the live with um, Kelly and Ryan show. That was 2000, uh, yeah, 2022. He broke it to 18. And then recently, just this past December, he broke it to 22 and a half. It was almost a 23, but then the buzzer went off. But it's not just rapid dunking. You have to go back a full meter, which is three feet, grab the ball, go legs up, have to go up, dunk it, go back again, back and forth, back and forth. So um, I probably have a record in saying shoot, 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 the most times in a minute as well. And now that he's got three records in that, I think we're going to leave that one alone. And he is ready to go break another record of most steps walked balancing a book on his head in a minute. So we're ready for that. We're kind of just trying to find the right time and the right place for it. What about the most canvases painted by a dog? Busy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would I'm hoping that I the would think. He, he's already got that one. He's got, a, he has a lot, but there's a lot of really cool animal artists out there. And, uh, and you wouldn't think, but it's like a whole new underworld. And they're all just really successful, really nice people behind the animal as well. So I think that the our collaboration in Alabama may actually have a chance of the most species involved in one single art installation. So that would be really neat. All right, we like to kind of set goals, meet them. It just kind of keeps us on target doing things so we're not just sitting around or just going on walks because like there's so much that our dogs are capable of oh, that yeah. when people say, Oh, I have only about a half hour or an hour to spend with my dog. I'm like, Oh my gosh, there's not enough hours in the day that I could spend with mine. There's so many more things that we want to go do. And I yeah, yeah. just got to like get back on the trail with the horse and does parkour and more records out there. You know, when you talk about, I probably need to get out. <laughs> when you talk about not um, tapping into the dog's potential, uh, you know, I tell my yeah. clients that all the time that we're just doing some basic obedience and people think their dogs aren't smart enough to like do it. They don't think the dog's trainable and this kind of stuff. And I tell them, 
you know, this is just scratching the surface of what a dog can do. Just basic obedience is really nothing compared to what they're capable of yeah. learning, you know? It really is. And sometimes it's just the challenges for me, like what else can I teach him to go do? And I mean, we started traveling and he's the best travel buddy. That's become sort of our thing too, doing art tours and all the cities that we've gone to and doing kind of tricks around town, making fun videos. And then I think he looks at me and he's still bored. So, you know, now he's been to Canada, Puerto Rico, all of the U.S. It's, it's what else? And he's only six. So we really need more creative ideas just for different things to do. Because the more you do with them, faster they learn, more pressure on the mom for more things. And just the closer your bond, it really is. And I feel like I could just look at him and I get him. Like, kind of why I think I know when he wants to paint or, you know, he goes when he wants water or just little things. They really are such amazing creatures. They really are. Have you done any breeding with him? Breeding? Breeding. Have you had any puppies? Breeding? No. Because no, you might have a, um, you might have a litter full having, of artists. I would have loved that. I would have loved it. We tried to go down the road and there was a health complication. So Leonard is going to be the one and only, but we're not opposed to adopting another artist. Well, you, you can clone him. So I know he, <laughs> if there was ever a clone candidate, I, I really want to find out more about that. <laughs> yeah. That would be really cool. Like if we had a clone Leonard, would he paint all the same paintings? <laughs> would he be inspired to work only in pastels, charcoal? Yeah. I don't know. His clone sample would have paint brain, on it. Like, where would that go? <laughs> there's always options. It's, it's yeah, 2024. I mean, there's always options. <laughs> have you had Border Collies before Leonard? I did. I had one other Border Collie named Leroy, and he made it to almost 14. And when he passed away, I said, if I get another one, his name will be Lee for Leroy. So he's Leonard Lee. That's why his middle name's Lee for my past one, Leroy. And it was so hard because it's just it's such a devastating loss when you lose them that it took all that I had. I had about a year without a dog, working with other people's dogs. I was having fun training a horse who does tricks. And then I just needed something like, you know, really in the house that I could have just for me. And I saw his picture day one and his breeder didn't actually think I was wacko for asking but I said do you happen to know the conception date of this litter and she said well it was the Monday of this 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 week and I go oh. and it was my last dog's birthday it was when Leonard was conceived so I am completely convinced that he is Leroy just reincarnated and Pet Psychic confirmed it she said he was from Utah and I said I don't know if I'm ready for a dog and she says well Leroy my last dog is Showing me a picture of a bus saying, just come get me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's where that adventure started. I was telling people I was puppy pregnant for eight weeks. <laughs> and I was in puppy labor when I was on the flight. And I get there and he was so tiny. Like he almost died at four weeks. And that was, oh, that was going to kill me. And we just, I just, I don't know what's wrong with him. Like we're going to do the best that we can to save him. And he was two and a half pounds at eight weeks which he was tiny. He didn't even look like a dog, really. People were like, is that a, instead of saying, is that a border collie? Yeah. They're like, is that a, a dog? A guinea pig? Yeah. yeah. Because he kind of looked like a little weasel. No legs, like ears shut, little, little tail. And when I flew out to Utah to get him, that's when our travel goal started, is we stopped at every state line to take a photo of welcome to whatever state. So we drove from Utah, across the country, back home to Virginia, visit my family up in Boston and you go to New England, you get a lot of states really quickly. And for his fifth birthday, we actually hit our 50th state of Hawaii. So COVID slowed things down a little bit, but you know, we, we celebrate everything. All the successes meant a trip, half birthdays, trip, birthday, trip, weekend, trip. <laughs> and just, you know, kind of rolling with it. <laughs> he's a very lucky Leonard and he's a very busy dog. I mean, I can't believe it. He's got a very full life. He does. I think his mom's the one maybe lacking it a lot. <laughs> but, you know, anything for him. We share all the good times. And there's really nothing that I want to do that would be more fun without him. So we do everything together. You know, every vacation is with him. Basically, when I go to the beach, I go to throw a ball <laughs> for hours. And, and I love it because they give us so much more than we could ever give them. And I think a lot of times people don't realize that until they're gone. And with him, I've left him 
maybe it's not healthy, but <laughs> I've only ever left him for two nights. And that was for me to fly to London to take a picture of the picture. <laughs> and then I paid $500 to come back a day early because I thought you did something good and you're home. I should be there with you. So that's kind of been our journey. And I hope we have, you know, so many more years to come because we have so many other things that we want to do together. And I know there's things I haven't even thought of yet. Yeah, well, I mean, he's he's really young in the broad scheme of things, which is awesome. So tell us a little bit about yeah. if people want to purchase his artwork, how that can work and what you have available and what that looks like. Because some people really get it yeah, really big so, into art and his art is very, very good. I can attest to it myself. We love the way that that hat came out and under the bill of it is that was the first time he painted on a hat using markers, his calligraphy markers. So I wanted to branch out and you have a one of a kind hat with there. Um, he will be having a few auctions that are coming up that if people want to follow on his Instagram. We would love that because then that money is going to be all going um, all to the charities. If they have something specific that they really want to create for a loved one, like great animal lover gifts around the holidays, they can ask and we can work on something. Cause we just try to make it a really personal experience for people. So they kind of share in all of the fun We've had some of his artwork that may have already been sold. We can also put it as a print on a pillow, um, puzzles for children. They make really cool pens. There's just so many neat things out there. Or if there's just a color scheme that you love, I have him work on that as well. So he does have a website, uh, LeonardThePaintingDog.com. You can see the different videos of how he paints there with the spill art, art on horseback, and... You know, we're happy to send people progress reports, too, of any privately commissioned artworks. They could say, well, you know, maybe we want more red on it. Maybe, you know, this. And we've had people send us photos of where they've hung the artwork. And I think the furthest painting has gone off to Japan. So that was just really cool to see. And he did do a collaboration with a painting Capuchin Monkey from Canada. And that collaboration went to Belinda Carlisle in Thailand. Because she has, she runs basically a charity, which gets the dogs and cats off the streets of Thailand and India and helps employ the people there to help the animals. And she's a huge art lover, animal lover, animal artist lover. And she sent us a really nice message saying thank you to Leonard and Leonard's mom. <laughs> Nobody knows who I am, but that's okay. I'm just a Sherpa. And <laughs> I love it. I and do I'm have, okay with that. I do have a question about the um, multiple species painting. So like the bird does yeah. something and then he does something or is everybody in there together? Like, what does that look like? <laughs> that might be a little chaotic. But <laughs> well, I'm just usually, <laughs> no, no, no. He did do one with a pig in Seattle and they were painting on a dock. And he'd met the pig prior, you know, because you just, at the end of the day, they are animals. So we try to respect them for being the animals that they are. I mean, he's a dog, he's a predator and birds can be prey. <laughs> so I'm, you know, we don't try not to put anybody in a situation where it might not go the way that we want it to, but he met the pig, loved the pig. Then a child went to go pick up the little pig and the pig squealed and Leonard's like, oh, I don't know about this. And he was able to paint near the pig. He just didn't want the pig behind him. <laughs> so that was neat that the pig did some. And then Leonard stepped over to the canvas. He added some. Uh, some of the other collaborations that we do, we start them through the mail. And we've done swaps with other animals where we'll just pick a certain number of colors and swap. And that's just really helped us build great relationships with other animal and animal owners all over the world. Sometimes, like for this current collaboration, we had a stencil and we're working with the German shepherd, Wilhelmina from Canada. And she started the artwork and did the background and stenciled. Well, it'll be a secret because it's coming out soon, but <laughs> stenciled something on there. And then Leonard painted on that part. And then we do a really cool reveal and that one will be going up for the auction. So it's kind of all different ways. He has not literally painted side by side yet, but there are two dogs that have painted side by side that'll be involved in that auction. So once you start getting into this world, it's there's just so much more to learn and see and do that 
that's really the, the one of the coolest parts. Yeah, I think it's awesome. And I've never heard anything of it, like anything close to it. I mean, some dogs play around with it, but wow. you've just taken it to a whole other level. So it's awesome. And thank you so much for what you do with giving back to the charities and everything else. I mean, it's an honor uh, that, to have you really? both on. I feel like you're like the two, two of the biggest celebrities we've had on yet. <laughs> Well, one yeah, celebrity and his mom. Great on you. We love the way. <laughs> love it. Love the way the hat looks on you. And they're all one of a kind. And a huge thank you to Tom out there in Naperville. That whole collection that he has of uh, dog discs is incredible. So Leonard had said he didn't want to do a whole lot in the TV world, which my last dog did. He wants to live a different life this time now that he's back again. And he wanted to try discs. So we try disc and. and I travel with him doing that and he's had like we've had some like younger children ask us to paint on discs so he did and it was such an honor when Tom accepted two of his painted ones to hang in the Ashley Whippet Museum and you know we try to get better at everything we do I don't know if he'll ever be a champion in the disc dog world but every goal that we hit is just as big a celebration for us. Yeah, so, he's a champion behind the easel, <laughs> most importantly. So if you guys do not already follow Leonard, I again want you to check out, I'm going to put all the links in the description, but specifically check out his Instagram. There's so much cool stuff on there. His handle is live, love, Leonard Lee again, and check out the website, you guys. There's so many awesome things to buy, and I'm so grateful to Teresa and Leonard for sending me this custom hat. I'm going to wear it everywhere. I love it. It's my favorite hat I own. It's awesome. Love it. And we want to learn more about this cloning because maybe I do need another uh, <laughs> <colleague> clone. <laughs> all right. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll text you the deets after we hang up. Thank you guys so much, so much, so much for joining us Fantastic. this week. I hope that you had so much fun meeting Leonard and Leonard's mom, Teresa. And <laughs> Leonard is the, the best painting dog I think the world's seen. So we're so, so grateful to have him. And he's uh, cute to boot. Who can, who can stand it? All right, you guys. <laughs> thank um, you so much for having us. Yeah. Hey, thanks for coming on. Thank you for it. coming on. If you guys need anything from us you can email us at studio at the quirky dog.com we will see you next wednesday and in the meantime keep it quirky, quirky. take uh -huh. care guys thanks right. <laughs> bye bye, bye. bye. <laughs> the views and opinions expressed by the hosts guests or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the studio 21 podcast cafe the united podcast network its partners or affiliates